hello welcome to my channel if you're new here thank you for stopping by if you're an old subscriber thank you so much for all your support over the months i am really grateful today we'll be learning how to draft a full scale bodice pattern okay now if you're able to master this full scale bodice pattern you will not go wrong with the making of any basic outfit in fact you will not go wrong with the fitting of your outfit again this pattern is Helen Armstrong's pattern drafting method. If you're interested in learning how to go about this, please keep on watching. Now to begin, I have marked a line at the top which is going to serve as the shoulder line. Now I'm going to impute my bust measurements divided by 2. Bust measurement divided by 2 plus 2 inches. That is the mark I am going to impute on the paper right now from the center of the paper to the side so i'll go ahead and mark that now the next line i'm going to mark is the top length which is usually 23 inches for short people and 25 inches for taller people or as preferred by you or your client now i'll divide this block by two just to differentiate the front from the back now this side will be the front while this side will be the back. Now from the shoulder line which is here, I'll impute the chest line. The standard way of getting the chest line is to divide the bust circumference by 6 plus 1.5 and 1 inch. Bust circumference divided by 6 plus 1.5 plus 1. That is the standard way of getting an accurate chest line. Okay, so I'll mark it across the pattern because it's the same for the front and the back. Now let's move to the front side. For the front side, I have the shoulder line and the chest line already. Now I'll go ahead and mark the bust point, the under bust and the waist line. Remember, we already have the top lens right there. I'll go ahead and extend the lines and then label them. Here is the chest line as CH, the bust point as BP, the under bust as UB, the waist line as WL and the top lens as TL. From the center front here, I will impute half of my shoulder measurement. My shoulder is 15, half of it will be 7.5. I will also place the same figure on the chest line. Now from the shoulder down to the chest line, I will be making broken lines. Making broken lines because this line is just going to serve as a guide to cover the actual armhole. Of course, our armhole line is not straight, okay? So now, I am going to come down by 1.5 inches for the shoulder slope. This is for the front shoulder slope. I am using 1.5 inches. Now, from the center, I will come in by 3 inches. Now, I'm going to connect the point I made on the 3 inches to the point on the shoulder. Connecting from the shoulder slope to the three inches. This is because of course our shoulders are not straight. Okay Next I will come down by three inches for my neck depth that three inches I connected the shoulder slope to is already going to serve as the neck width So I'll go ahead and cover the neckline On the chest line, I'll go up by 3 inches and make a mark there. Now on that 3 inches, I'll go in by 0 0.5 for the armhole curving. I'll curve it like this with the help of my armhole curve. Now make sure you're placing the armhole curve correctly. Let it touch the 0 0.5, the shoulder slope and the chest line. Then you go ahead and curve out the armhole next we'll be imputing our dart to do that on the bust point i'll mark half of my bust span that is nipple to nipple my bust span is 7.5 and half of it is 3.75 i'll mark on the bust point and place the same figure on the top length and go ahead and connect it straight 
for the dart intake i'll use 0 0.75 on both sides of this straight line i connected to the bust point okay so i'll connect the both darts to the bust point and also to the top length After taking the dart, I'm going to be imputing my body measurement. On the chest line, I will impute my bust circumference divide by 4. Down to the waist line, I will impute my waist circumference divide by 4. I'm going to be replacing this dart here, which is 1.5 inches. Now, on the top length, I will impute my hips circumference divide by 4, although I minus 1 inch from my actual hip circumference. So, I'll connect the points together. So, because the front waist length is usually longer than the back waist length, we'll be reducing the side of the front and on the bust point line, I'll come down by the difference between the front and back waist length and connect to the bust point. Now, this is in order for the front and the back to be equal on the side because we all know that when joining them on the fabric, we join them at the side. Okay, so this side that is going to be closed at the end of the day. Now, I'll get the midpoint of this side that and on that midpoint, go out by 0 0.7. 75. You can go out by 0 0.5 if you're on a small size. Now, on that 0 0.5, I'll connect to the chest line and a little bit towards the waist line. Now we can comfortably say we are done, but just in case you want to give the side of your top a curvy effect, which is optional, from the side you go up by 1.5 inches and curve it towards the dart line or towards the center. This is optional, like I said, and the length you go up with is actually dependent on you okay so now we are done with the front block let's move to the back first thing i'll do on the back pattern is to reduce the length because the back waist is shorter than the front waist okay so you see that side that i took on the front side we are going to be reducing it on this back side on the length from the top length here i will go up by the difference between the front and the back waist length and then rule it out this place is now cancelled to proceed i'll mark my back waist length since i have the shoulder line and the chest line already so from the shoulder line i'll come down by the back my back waist length which is 14 inches and mark it out now on that center back waist i'll come in by 0 0.75 inches for the back tightening i'll take it up and down now this method is to eliminate zipper bulge from here i'll impute my shoulder divide by two i'll also put the same figure on the chest line and then create broken lines now from the center back i'll come in by three inches on the shoulder i'll go down by one inch connect the one inch to the three inches point for the back shoulder slope for the back neck depth i use one inch you can use 1.5 inches but one inch is standard then i'll cover out the back neckline I'll get the midpoint of this armhole line. On that midpoint, I'll go in by 0 0.2 and then cover out the back armhole. The back armhole is not as deep as the front. Okay, making sure the curved ruler is properly placed. 
on the chest line from here i'll come in by half of my bust band and also on the top length and make a straight line now i'll take 0 0.75 here and here i'll come down by one inch from the chest line this is where the dart is going to end from the waist now it's time to impute our body measurement from here on the chest line i'll impute the, my bust circumference divide by four from this line you can see where i place my tape from now on the waist from here i will impute my waist circumference divide by four including the dart intake allowance now on the hip line from here i will take the hips divide by four and then connect the points because we curved the side of the front we are also going to be curving the side of the back now the same figure i used to cover out the side of the front is the same figure that i'll use to cover the side of the back so i'll go up by 1.5 inches and then curve it into the dart leg having done that we have come to the end of today's tutorial i hope you got value from watching this video please don't forget to like share and subscribe to this channel if you're yet to and i hope to see you in my next tutorial and just in case you have any question please drop them in the comments thank you bye